It's always a delight knowing you're there. The program is Agriculture in Focus. Agriculture in Focus is a production of Pat Agro Media. Pat Agro Media is all about advancing food security and agri business. My name is Alpha Jackden. The year is still new. As always, on today's episode of the program, we will attempt to see if we can fashion out a roadmap for the agricultural sector as far as the 2024 season is concerned. But as always, we'll try and find out from Nigerians what in their opinion or how best the agri sector can be enhanced towards food sustainability. After that, as always, the interview segment will come up. After the interview segment, I'll hand you over to Abigail Stowe for some news that you can use. That will be followed by Common Sense Agriculture. The program will come to a close with trending fields. All you need to do is sit back, relax, because I assure you that the next 25 minutes will be worth your while. The government should go and do a real thorough research pertaining agri. And Nigeria as a, as a giant of Africa, we need to do that because a lot of country around us are depending on us and we are blessed one we have fertile lands i can see the whites coming in here to invest on agri we can't allow them to take over the whole thing the government need to do some things for us maybe they can throw it open so that people can bring in the idea to match allow this thing because we need it this time around if government can ensure that there is security of life and property that farmers can go to their their farms and carry out the agricultural uh, activities without being kidnapped or killed in the process. I think by that, the, the level of production in terms of uh, uh, agro production will uh, astronomically increase. Because when you, when you exploit the agricultural value chain, in the process, you'll be able to set up micro industries that has to do with production. In the process, you are going to uh, uh, create employment. As you know, Nigeria has a huge potential in agriculture. And uh, you know, agriculture is one of the legacies that our ancestors has bequeathed to us. And you know, there is no way we can survive if there is no food. So we need to put more effort. Uh, all the states across the north, the south, every country, every state you go in Nigeria has potential to produce different kind of cash crops, different kind of food products. And so we need to exploit this potential to produce maximally so that we we'll have food sufficiency. We are lucky because we have not really mechanized our farming in some places. And another factor that is hindering is hindering our production capacity at the moment is insecurity. And so there are a lot of issues that are interwoven and the government needs to work on the security issue, then encourage farmers with incentives so that they can produce crops. Now, we are coming to you from a very interesting background. You will soon find out for yourself. But before I do that, let me just introduce my guest in person of Mr. Rexin Tedeke. Tedeke. Uh, Rexin, the son of military parentage and eventually the academia. How did you find yourself here? Well, um, yes, the son of late Professor Moses Tedeke. And um, business got bad sometime 2007, 2008. So I went to the creek, into militancy in the creek, and into bunkering. Then what they call the ex-militant who became a farmer, the vice president, former vice president, Timanjo was here. So I left the comfort of the academia, and I came into agriculture. Uh, because Buari, President Buari, said, go to the farm. So we came here. Luckily for us, we had a community here in Gati that was interested in what we were going to be able to do, 2017. And... A long story short, we're sitting, now sitting on 1,000 hectares in Nigeria Farmers Group and Cooperative Society Farm Estate. We're now sitting on 1,000 hectares, the over 6,000 cattle with the Fulani communities. We have at least over 100 people working here. At the height, we had about 1,000 working, but the economy took a toll on us. And so for Nigeria to work, we need to be able to put in the effort, particularly in rural Nigeria, because rural Nigeria is a virgin feed. It's a gold mine. You know, to have 200 million people and to have over 
70 million hectares of farmland. And about 40 million arable hectares of farmland. We, we are a nation that shouldn't be talking about hunger. We are a nation that shouldn't be talking about low productivity. And we are a nation that shouldn't be struggling to take care of the interests of our people. And so that was why we came here. I'm still interested in this setting because I can see you have everything here. You have a clinic. And, you know, everything here works in spite of the fact that it's somewhere out of civilization, if I may use that. <laughs> Let's get something very clear. This is civilization. Every single industrial revolution was premised on an agrarian revolution. People farmed because man must eat. Now, the West farm. China is farming. Britain farm. A couple of days ago, German, who would believe that? Germany, one of the most industrial nations in the world, would have thousands of their people on the streets protesting against subsidy. Who would have believed that? A nation that has that capacity that we have must look at how we can solve our problem instead. What you are seeing here is an example of what can work in the country. See, when they talk about palliatives, I laugh. Palliatives of what? 20,000, 10,000? What would that do? Palliatives should be productive. The nation must get to a phase where you look at your land you have. You said, okay, if you can farm one hectare, I will pay you 30,000 naira every year for the next one year. But show that you can farm. Show that you can plant tree. I was born 1979. Second of March, to be precise. Mount Blicker Court, I was born in Georgia. They took Mount Blicker Court to Delta State to plant kola nut. Today, that kola nut has about 10 or so offspring. And they harvest bags of kola nut every year. Think about productivity. Think about planting trees. When was the last time this nation planted trees? We stopped planting trees. So the concept here is to show that when we start planting trees, we can start growing the country. Palm tree. It's more, palm oil is more expensive than crude oil. So why are we not planting 10 million palm trees over the next five years? And then subsequently we begin to harvest palm oil that can replace crude oil. Why are we not doing it? It is because we lost interest in what really works. So we're not an industrial people, we're farming people. And then if we're able to get cattle right, we get maize right, we get soya beans right, we get sesame right, we get uh, cassava right, agbado and cassava right. Guess what happens? You can become a nation that generates $100 billion every year from agriculture. And what is that going to do? Create jobs. Insecurity. Look, food security is national security. The insecurity you are having is because you are not productive. When a man is hungry, there is nothing he cannot do. 2024 is here. Yes. What are your expectations? Because I ask you this question because you are into everything farming from what I see here. This is me appealing to the president. Baba, the country needs food. Whatever you are doing with inflation will not help food. Focus on food production. How do you do that? Focus on those who are actually farming. Let your intervention start from those who are doing the job. If you come to a place like this and you see that you're employing 1,000, ask them, can you employ 10,000? And if you can employ 10,000, what more land do you need? Focus on that land. Focus on the people. Change your narrative. Grow your country. This is a new year. There is no food. And when the nation is without food, the nation cannot be talking about fighting inflation. So the government should focus on productivity rather than fighting that which will not add to the interests of our people. So it is food, food, food. Talk they, to us about society. Now, look at it. Cooperatives. Way. Yes, cooperatives. The Nigerian Farmers Group Cooperative Society. The farm was set up with the aim to start urban rural migratory process where people leave the cities and go to the villages to farm. That was the essence. Because, you see, the, the reason most of us run to the cities is because there are no jobs in the villages. All of a sudden, the farm communities in places like Gate, in Kwale, in Ekiti, in Lagos, in Kebi, all of them want to go to Abuja. They want to go to Lagos for greener pastures, right? So what you do, what we did was drag them down. I have stayed in this place every day since 2019. You can stay in rural Nigeria. Yes, there is farmer setters clash, but create a community where the people feel that they are all co-owners of the project. That way, they protect the project because once they protect the project, they protect the essence of their own living. And so fighting will not become a solution. So this community is a community that was set up to make that a reality. So what should National Assembly members do? What should House of Rep members do? Senators, House of Rep, and the government? Let your constituency project be productive projects. Stop buying Okada and sewing machine. Start going to your constituency, go to your senatorial district, go to your house of rep um, uh, constituency and build a farm estate there. Your farm estate should be able to apply 500, 1,000. Will you be talking about unemployment? Hold That's your points. As we take a short break, the program will continue shortly. It's agriculture in focus. We're advancing food security and agribusiness remains our mainstay. We'll be back <laughs> shortly. The program is agriculture in focus. The world is 
is talking about the generative agriculture. Activity alone can be a great source of revenue. You're welcome back. Before we went on break, you had a charge for the politicians. But I want to find out from you, as a farmer, are you insulated in any way from the middleman? I have always asked this question because a lot of people believe, you know, often than not, the farmer is shortchanged. The middleman is not our problem. See, we have a way of blaming the wrong people in this country. The middleman is not your problem. And let me give you a very clear example for you. A lot of the time for the, our rice meal to work, what we do is to get middlemen to get us rice from places we ordinarily will not go to. So think about it. Very can go reach there. Man, Fino carry load from there. The middleman will hand, hand, uh, hire this uh, old vehicle to go and bring these goods. You're not going you know, to make money. Yes. See, if your structures are not correct, mm -hmm. the middleman will have no choice but to exploit it. We need basic rural infrastructure in rural Nigeria. I often say that when state governors are building airports, instead of building roads leading to farming communities, you are not being productive. So connect farming communities to markets, isn't it? Is that something that the middleman should do? No. So when you blame the middleman, it's like you blame the middleman, you blame the farmer for high food prices. You are not blaming government whose policies are affecting you as the people. So government should look at the right thing. And I often say that rural community infrastructure is some of the cheapest you can get. What do I mean? You don't need lateral um, asphalt road. You need lateral road. Just sand, proper sand um, road with right drainages. We need Nigeria to all the communities. You solve that, you need basic electricity. Do we have them? No. So why do you want me to produce? I, 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 I have a 250 kVA generator here. I have a 200 kVA generator here. I brought light electricity from the express to this place. Think about it. Well so over I, two kilometers. Exactly. So I have spent about 300 million on power alone. How many rural communities will have that money to spend? So if they are not able to be productive. If they are not able to get their things right, we don't have to blame any middleman who, is, who goes to them and says, ah, when I'm not far finished, he says, yes. He says, I beg, make a buy from you. The local man does not have money to, to, to preserve them. The middleman does what? Has money to buy them. So what, are you, what is he going to do? He's going to buy and then sell to the market based on cost and um, benefit analysis. You, so don't blame the middleman. Government, local government are dead in Nigeria. Let's be very blunt to ourselves. What that's, are they doing? That's the next question. I want to find out from you, where should farming belong? Exclusive, residual, or what's the other Agriculture one? Agriculture is a national security issue. Mm. So farming should be a national security issue. Federal, state, local. I mean, make everybody get involved. That's all I'm saying. For now, let me give you an example. If the local government is involved, okay, they look at what their people need and solve those problems. And what most Nigerian local government need is farming. You go to the Nigeria Delta, it's rain fed, isn't it? Palm tree, um, cassava. Um, yam and all the rest. R rice. Imagine that rice is mostly farmed in the north, whereas the wetland is in the south. So local governments are not involved. And when they are not involved, agriculture cannot work. When the state government are not involved, agriculture cannot work. The only people who are doing anything at all is federal government. But they cannot do enough. The only thing they are supposed to do is to provide funding, provide structures to support the state. Then the state provide, use those funds to ensure that the local government are productive. So if they're able to do the right thing, then our problem is solved from the foundation. Are we truly threatened as far as food insecurity is concerned? Absolutely. Yes, we are threatened with regards to food security. See, um, when you have 200 million people sitting on over 70 million arable hectares of land, at an, with an average age of 19 years old, that's the Nigerian population, you have a crisis in your hand if they cannot eat. What is the purchasing power of the average Nigerian farmer or the average Nigerian ordinary person? It's not there. Now, he doesn't have purchasing power. You are fighting inflation. He cannot buy food. You cannot produce food. So you have a crisis of lack of productivity and lack of uh, consumption capacity, which is lack of purchasing power. You have to be able to harmonize them. So oh, even if I can, even if you cannot buy the food, let there be food and let it be available. How can we attract the youth back to land? How did I come here? First and foremost, it has to be attractive and interesting. Share One. your thoughts with us. Good. That's what I'm saying. Mm. I, Boris said, go to the farm. I saw land. And I said, okay, let me try and do it. There needs to be dedication and commitment on the side of government. Yes, the Anchor Boras program has Why the problems. Why is it always government? What of the private sector? The private sector cannot do it. If the private sector can do it, the German farmer will not be on the street. You see, the American economy and the American farmer are the most subsidized in the world. But don't you think these are two separate they, No, there scenarios. are not. There are not. Government takes care of national security. The private sector do what? Uh, do the, the private thing. Now, you cannot tell the private sector to go and invest in agriculture. Agriculture that takes has longer gestation period. It takes longer time for it to become productive. How many private sector want to wake up today and say, okay, I'm willing to commit $500 million, right, or billion naira into agriculture and wait for 10 years? 
Tell me any private sector that will be willing to do it. Long-term investments. <laughs> you, you, the private sectors are more short-term. Yeah. So what government does to provide the foundation? Mm -hmm. Now, you see why the American farmer... For every one dollar the American farmer sent, spend, government accounts for about 45 to 50 percent of that. What does that tell you? Subsidy is in practically half of what the American farmer... And that is subsidy in an economy that has infrastructure, in an economy that has security, in an economy that has funding. And then the farmers get loan at 3 to 4 percent. Europe, 5 to 6 percent. Asia, 7 percent. And the Nigerian farmer does, the Nigerian farmer does not have infrastructure, does not have uh, proper educational training, does not have anything, gets loan at 9 percent, gets loan at 50 percent, gets loan at 30 percent. The private sector in Nigeria is doing a monstrous job producing the little food that they are producing. If government is not willing to come in, what you are going to see is that over the last decade, more people have left agriculture than have come into agriculture because it is difficult. So the foundation needs to be available. If the foundation is not available, private sector will not come in. Can we afford to lose hope? But we cannot afford to lose hope. What needs to happen is the refocusing of the agenda. We need to focus on Agbado. We need to focus on cassava. We need to focus on livestock. We need to focus on our rural productivity. Okay, you came here, now look at it. Land. We should farm this land, rainy season, dry season, all year round. We cannot lose hope. But we are in a very battling situation. But Nigeria can work. You've seen that we can work here. An Urubu man from the Niger Delta in Asarawa State, having one of the largest community farm projects. What does that tell you? We can make this country work if they are ready to make it work. Rexen, always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. Thank you anyway, I'll now hand you over to Abigail Stowe for some news that you can use. Thank you and welcome to the new segment on Agriculture in Focus. I am Abigail Stowe. The federal government is to tackle rising food prices across the country through support to farmers for increased production on rice and staple crops. The latest data from the National Bureau of Statistics shows that the food inflation is currently at its highest level in over 18 years. Governor Omar Namadi of Jigar State has said that the state would leverage on the National Wheat Development Program to produce 2 million tons of wheat for export and agricultural self-sufficiency. The ongoing dry season program in the state, he said, would boost nationwide wheat cultivation. The National Publicity Secretary of the Poultry Association of Nigeria, Mr. Godwin Ekwebe, has urged the government to prevent the smuggling of local grains to neighboring countries. He identified the high cost of grains as a primary challenge facing the poultry industry. And now to the global scene. In Brazil, Soybean and corn exports started the year at a strong pace, as also wheat and soy meal shipments. The country's custom data has shown. Farmers across Germany on Monday began protests against the government's economic and agricultural policies, blocking roads and highways with tractors and marching through major cities. The government plans to reduce and withdraw tax breaks for the agriculture sector. This has been the news on the new segment on the agriculture in focus. Thank you for staying with us. There's lots more coming your way. And I am Abigail Stowe. Abigail Stowe, as always, thanks so much for that great effort. I will now hand you over to Timmy Simpson for Common Sense Agriculture. Welcome to Common Sense Agriculture our low-hanging insights into farming and agribusiness. My name is Timmy Simpson. Water is a critical input for agricultural production and plays an important role in food security. Irrigated agriculture represents 20% of the total cultivated land and contributes 40% of the total food produced worldwide. Water serves as a raw material for various chemical processes, including photosynthesis, and through transpiration, protecting the plant against wide variation in temperature. It is pertinent to note that we consume 70% of all fresh water worldwide on agriculture, of which about one third is linked to meat and dairy production. More importantly, sustainable intensification of agriculture through critical investments in irrigation infrastructure and key institutional reforms helps to achieve sustainable development goals on efficient use of water as well as eliminating hunger. The common sense here is to adopt a water governance sustainability approach that is guided by the principles of stewardship, equity, and accountability. Until we come your way again, be guided by these insight into farming and agribusiness from agriculture in focus 
My name is Timmy Simpson. Timmy Simpson, thank you so much for your words of wisdom. It's about time I hand you over to Valogo Anthony for Trending Fields. Yeah, welcome to Trending Fields here on Agriculture in Focus. In this segment, we will be highlighting agriculture topics trending all across the internet. My name is Balogun Antonia, and thank you for joining us. Now, for our first trend for today, while many were closing up with holiday leftovers, a farm in Tibet, Cumbria, England, embarked on a unique New Year's mission that has planting a whooping 500 trees a day. Now, forget the notion of a slow start to the year. These farmers are embracing the green revolution. This project is fought by the Farming in Protected Landscapes grant, and they are resurrecting hedgerows boundaries one spade at a time. Now, despite the relentless rain and whipping winds, these tree planting warriors are not backing down. Armed with 500 trees and a trusty spade, they are turning the farm into a lush haven for nature. Now, imagine this in Nigeria. Replicating this tree planting fervor can combat deforestation, boost biodiversity, and empower local communities. In our next trend for today, in Santa Cruz, California, farming is not just a job, it's like a regenerative dance party, thanks to the Sustainable Systems Research Foundation, SSRF. Now, SSRF, the cool cat of agri-science in Santa Cruz, are hosting workshops that make farming really interesting. From soil health to compositing, they are not just about talk, they are connecting farmers to tractors, greenhouses, and local organizations. So if you thought farming was all about straw hats and serious faces, think again. SSRF is proving that sustainable farming is the ultimate cool kid on the block. For our last trend for today, in a breakthrough dance of technology and sustainability, stakeholders in Nigeria are turning up the cool factor with self-chill technology. Now, this technology is developed by EcoTutu in collaboration with the Nigerian Stock Products Research Institute and Solar Cooling Engineering from Germany. This solar-powered cooling solution aims to shake off post-harvest losses by extending the shelf life of perishables. Now, at a recent Lagos summit, West Burner Council General of Germany in Nigeria highlighted the urgent need for a cooling system to ensure food security. Dr. Victor Torres Toledo of Solar Cooling Engineering explained how self chill with a solar powered group can store agricultural goods at optimal conditions. Babaji Oluwa, the CEO of EcoTutu, shared the mission making cold chains accessible to all, especially smaller players. Michael Akinsete, co founder and CMO of EcoTutu, revealed their broader vision to become a household name in agriculture. It's not just tech, it's a reading, changing revolution for Nigerian farming and food preservation. That's all for today here on Training Fields on Agriculture in Focus. If you'd like to be part of the program, send us your comments and feedback. You can follow us on all our social media handles. The handle is at Patagro underscore media. My name is Balogun Antonio and do have a great night. Balogun Antonio, thank you so much for Trending Fields. And this is where we'll be drawing the curtain on today's episode of the program. It's been Agriculture in Focus, where advancing food security and agribusiness remains our mainstay. This program is open to sponsorship. Once more, Happy New Year. My name is Alpha Jagden. Thanks for watching.